drawn out in depth where I can speak my final words and everybody will be shocked by that. Uh, but it's, it's, there's no rules to regulate that. It's just go with what's good for the story. Uh, and in the, in the um, uh, footage we saw from the immersionist world, they certainly have numbers, hit points, and so on. So these guys that were doing the fighting there in the woods, they had hit points. They just didn't count them out loud. Uh, the difference is, you know, a hit is a hit is a hit. And I'm counting that in my head is when I lose my hit points and when I reach zero, I fall down. So that's how that would work. And, and both also have a tendency to, to like the sci-fi fantasy settings. Uh, you won't see many narrativists doing anything in a fantasy world. They, they're going to do Ingmar Bergman stuff, pretty much. Is that a question? Well, no, I was just thinking of um, sci-fi, fantasy, or historical, or some kind of yeah. genre. Yeah. Uh, um, if, if, uh, it's a um, costume piece. <laughs> it's, yeah. It is. Uh, if the narrativist stuff is the drama of LARP, right. then this is the blockbusters of LARP. <laughs> if you will. <laughs> in a sense, right? Because you, you will like go to different worlds right. and... and uh, I mean, there aren't too many immersionist stars who are going to focus on a thing like, like the dinner with the family. It's going to be in a fantasy setting, or it's going to be you know, somewhere very strange for the ordinary person. And escapism actually goes into that to some extent. Yes. Uh, so what would these guys have in common, the, the um, uh, immersionists and the narrativists? Well, uh, I'm going to say props. Uh, because narratives, you, you know, you saw they were uh, on the manor, right? Because that's where the death of Dana took place. So they can do that. Uh, and also rule minimalism in the sense that uh, neither of them would, would embrace 100 pages of rules. Uh, for the immersionist, that's going to get in the way because you have to actually go out of character to use them. Saying, you know, fireball is stepping out of character because it's a rule term. They would rather say, you know, lust of Beth Lamin. In, in Cinder, that's going to mean something, and, and so on. Um, and uh, so, if there are any rules in the immersionist uh, uh, way of doing things, it's going to be things that you can do without stepping out of character. And that tends to be a common denominator between these two as well. So, yeah, that's, that's the three. That's the three stuff. Questions? Um, so, for your immersionists, when they say these words, don't they have to step out of character to explain their effect at that point? Uh, if you're a wizard, yes, yeah. uh, but you want to minimize that as much as possible. Okay. So, the, the classic North American sort of gameist style of doing a, a spell is you know, the, the three count. I put you to sleep one, I put you to sleep two, I put you to sleep three. That's a classic way of doing it. Okay. In that case, it would be more. Uh, long elvish or whatever language is invoked, and then whispering, just sleep now. Okay. And just try to keep that disruption as, as small as possible. Uh, I saw a rule set, this was in the 90s, where if two wizards in the immersion style wanted to duel each other, and instead of saying, I'm putting 10 magic points, and I'm putting 20 magic points, the organizers had codified it to colors. So we would invoke the powers of the red sphere, and that means so and so many points. So then the, the, challenge, the challengee would, oh, I'm invoking the powers of the blue sphere, which means more points. And, and then you go back and forth. And the, the people who play the wizards would have read up on this and studied this properly before the LARP. No one else had to, because they're not playing wizards. So they would just listen to that and go, yeah, these are some uber cool wizards doing wizardy things, and I'm just gonna, not going to get involved with that. Um, so uh, that's that's kind of how the rule system in the immersion style is. You have to trust the people who might be doing that. Yes, so they're not screwing it's over. completely built on the honor yeah. system. It's completely yeah. built on player trust. There's a lot of prep conditionality too. If you want to maintain immersion, you sort of say, like they did, when the cannon goes off, everyone falls. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. Or when I say this, then you have to respond this way. That way you get cues. So for instance, Underworld says, you know, uh, prepare to die. If, if you hear that said, the next swing is going to be worth 50. Sort of thing. Oh, okay. right. So it's like every, there's certain things that everybody knows, so you give them the conditions, right? This happens, you respond this way. And that allows you to maintain the non whisper yeah. LARP, right? So, okay. Yeah, all sorts of visual cues and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess that's it. <laughs>
Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. About the narrative, uh, the black box thing. Is that done in front of everyone? Like, or yeah. Is it that just well, it, it depends. Um, I, let's see now what I remember for because I wasn't at the quiet dinner for the family. Yeah. Uh, I think the black box thing was actually just the organizer and the, the character going, the, the one player going there. So the monologue was in front of everyone. Oh, the monologue, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and then, let's see now, were the other, because there are all sorts of interesting meta techniques that, that have been added. Uh, if you go into the Nordic LARP wiki, it has a list of all sorts of meta techniques that are being developed by, by uh, these guys to explore. Um, narratives and prepare for a lot in all sorts of different ways. So yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Woo